Hi guys and gals, welcome back to the shop. I finally gave in and decided to buy a drill press. So I got this drill press from Harbor Freight. It's literally probably the cheapest drill press you can buy. Uh, today I'm going to take it out of the box, put it together, and tell you what I think. the first things I noticed was how clean everything is and I'm surprised by this because the uh, floor model that they had at Harbor Freight was actually really grimy um, and it actually looked a little bit different than this so I suppose they change their models every once in a while although you would like it to be the case that what you see is what you get so what you see at the store is what you would get in the box but not exactly true um, I was also surprised by how light all the pieces are because I figured this this is the base and this is the table and I figured this is going to be cast iron so it's going to be fairly heavy um, but it's not so the reason that it's not heavy is because this is not cast iron it's actually stamped steel or appears to be stamped steel and uh, this is just like stamped out of one piece some parts are bent here and this is stamped and then it's got some welds that connect these pieces together so uh, it seems to be fairly sturdy but certainly not as sturdy as cast iron would be um, it's everything has a light coating of oil on it but uh, it's not too bad so I'm going to take a few minutes and wipe all that off out of curiosity, I'm going to check how thick this steel is. It's about three millimeters. That's about 0.12 inches. The column is kind of ridiculous. Look how thin that steel is. So about 0.127 millimeters, 0.65625 inches. So it's about 1 16th of an inch thick. That's not very thick, but uh, I guess that it's strong enough for this. We shall find out. I might end up filling this column with concrete, which I've heard is uh, a good thing to do to stabilize it, but we shall see. One minor annoyance I've run into already is you can't actually put a socket wrench over these bolts because it's too close to this flange here. So you just have to use a wrench.
was a little surprised to learn that these pulleys are actually made out of aluminum. I thought maybe they would be made out of plastic. Uh, they perhaps were a little over generous with the grease here, but uh, like a lot of things, better to have too much than too little. Changing the speeds is pretty simple. You just move this pulley up or down and it tells you how many RPMs you can expect based on each setting. In order to loosen up that belt so you can change the speed setting, you have to move the, actually move the motor. So you undo this and then it gives you some flex to move the motor in and out. Um, I actually had to loosen up some bolts in the back to make this a little bit easier to move because it was pretty stiff. So you can pull it in, tighten that back down, and then that gives you enough slop to be able to move the pulleys. It comes with this adjustable light, which is pretty handy. You can get that in nice and close to your work. For me, it's not a big deal because I try to have pretty decent lighting. But uh, if you're in a dark garage or something, it's nice to have that extra light. I'm going to uh, put it through all the different speed settings to see how it performs and uh, see what it sounds like. I put a relatively long drill bit in the chuck and now I'm checking for a square and right out of the factory the left to right alignment is pretty darn good which is adjustable there's a little bolt underneath the uh, table that you can adjust but I don't see myself doing that a whole lot if I have to make an angled hole I'll probably make some sort of jig or something to do that let's check front to back now Unfortunately, the front to back alignment is not quite as good. You can see a small gap here at the top. And there's no easy way to adjust that. Um, basically, I'd have to take the table off of the post and do a little filing um, to be able to, to tweak that a little bit. But it's not, I'm going to leave it for right now because it's not a huge deal. But in the long run, I'd want to fix that. The drill press is really light and it's actually pretty top heavy because uh, all the weights up here in the motor, the base is, it's like I said, it's just a stamped steel so it's really light. So it's a good idea if um, you're like me and you don't want to mount it permanently to at least use a couple clamps on it to make sure it doesn't move around on you. Now it's time to actually try some drilling. Having not spent much time using a drill press, I'm really impressed with, get it, impressed? Impressed with the uh, ease at which you can drill holes. Uh, it's a lot different from using a hand drill where you always feel like it's bogging down as soon as it starts to dig in and then uh, you also feel like it's going to get ripped out of your hand if it gets caught. It's, it's a completely different feel. It, it's got so much torque to it in the drill press that um, it doesn't slow down at all when you're drilling, which is nice. So I like it. Now I've got a dial indicator set up so we can check the runout of the spindle. So I'm just slowly turning the spindle and it seems to be about four to five thou. Which is pretty darn good because that's counting in not only the inaccuracies of the spindle but of the chuck itself so and I guess it would be nice to uh, put something in the chuck 
and test that. Uh, but I don't, I don't know what I would use that'd be really straight and reliable as being um, true. So well, this gets up, so it's pretty close. Really, I don't think four or five thou is too bad. Not for something that's this cheap. Overall, I'm pretty happy with this purchase. For 65 bucks, it's really kind of hard to beat this. I was thinking about getting one of those uh, guides that you put on your, your drill, like your hand drill. Um, but those are like 20 or 30 or even 50 bucks. You can buy a whole drill press for 65 bucks. And I haven't used it a whole lot, but based on the reviews and based from what I've looked at it so far, I think it's going to turn out to be a pretty useful tool. If you've used this tool, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Take care.